has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> You must unite what has been said to We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Can you count, suckers? I say the future! Casting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored, yes, anchored until further notice, above Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 Flat Earth Conference, but we're still going to talk about other things, so don't worry. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, then you're obsessed with the SpaceX moon mission, which is not going to happen. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If you are listening to this and it is not a Tuesday night, and furthermore, if it is not February 28th, then please don't call the phone line because it's just going to go to voicemail. Now, I still may listen to the voicemail, but I'm not going to pick it up live. And as far as tonight goes, do not call in until I say so, because we have to make sure the phone lines are open, and they are not open at this particular time. As soon as the studio says they are open, I will give you guys the green light. Hopefully it won't take until the second hour like we did last week. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery, It is strange that only extraordinary men make the discoveries which later appear so easy and simple. That's from George C. Lichtenberg. And I don't know who George C. Lichtenberg was, but I am sure that the peanut gallery will eventually tell me. A couple things before we get into uh, at least a few emails. Uh, The Jeffrey Grupp challenge is still in effect. Any anti-flat earthers, any scientists, anybody that studies any ology or professional debunker, oh, German scientist, that's who George C. Lichtenberg was. I, I probably would have guessed. And <laughs> anyway, anyone, anyone wants to debate Flat Earth, I know I took the last debate, but that's because I had to. The uh, producer over in London wanted me to debate a science educator, so I did that last weekend. And hopefully the video that will be posted fairly soon. But I promise the very next one will be going to Jeffrey Grupp if there is someone brave enough to challenge the Flat Earth. And so far, we don't have any takers. The Flat Earth Conference page, I'm going to mention this every single week until that is fe2017.com. The conference is in Raleigh, North Carolina, November 9th and 10th of this year. So schedule your calendar accordingly and check out the website. There are hotel rooms and all sorts of fun things you can look at at the site. License plate deadline, and I have to mention it this week because today is the end of the month, which means tomorrow I am going to be building the March 2017 Flat Earth license plate collection and a wonderful young lady, and I'll mention her email hopefully if I can remember it, 
she sent me the it's flat license plate from Colorado. So that is going to be the thumbnail for it. And that's going to be the lead slide or maybe not the lead slide. But it's definitely going to be in the first few thing just keeps growing and growing. Eventually, I'm going to have to <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to have to create a list of license plates that haven't represented flat earth. But if you ha are getting a flat earth license plate, even if you don't have it on your car yet, if you just have a screenshot from the Department of Licensing, email it to me at msergeant23 at, 20, uh, at comcast.net, and I will make sure that it gets included in the slideshows and a special video and at least be a thumbnail. And you don't have to choose it's flat. Remember, it's six, seven, or eight letters and get creative. Some people have said flat earth, FLT, R R T H. Some people have said it is flat because they get eight letters in New York and California. So get creative. I, I'm still waiting for the one, I think it's from Florida, that's going to do no curve. I think that's awesome. No curve is great. No globe would be good. You, you know, don't, don't make it to where it's going to be misunderstood as something else because, because the Department of Licensing, when you put in for your vanity plates, they ask you to explain it because there's so many things that – and the peanut gallery is sending me a call to sub anti-vaxxers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to mention that eventually. So what else? Before we get into our first email, I'd like to mention, if you haven't already seen it, the SpaceX moon mission rant that I did which was that SpaceX – Just and feel free, not call, do not call in now. I'm not even giving the phone number out yet. But keep this in mind. This is what the thing that's been on my mind for the last 24 hours, which is SpaceX came out yesterday and they said that they're going to the moon. They're going to send not just people. They're going to send tourists around the moon and back. They're not going to land, but they're going to do an orbit around the moon and back. Now, the reason why this irritated me to no end was that if you want to say you're going to colonize Mars eventually down the road, that's fine. You want to say that you know, because you don't have to fake it anytime soon. But if you say you're going to send tourists to you're, you're, you're being specific, you're going to send two people around the moon and back next year, next year, that's that's going so far beyond you painted yourself into a corner because you want to fake something, at least fake something that's realistic. I don't know how you're going to be able to fake this. I'm talking to anybody that's in the aerospace industry that's tied to SpaceX. I do not know how you're going to pull this off. There, there are no Saturn V rockets lying around. But what, what rocket booster are you going to use? You think you're going to use the Falcon booster? That thing's not even tested. Plus, they don't even have a capsule for this thing. Orion hasn't even finished its testing yet. They were going to do some moon missions. So you're, and you're jumping way ahead. You're going to do what NASA hasn't done in 50 years I I can't wait to see how this is going to – are you just going to blow the rocket up and say that the people died on the pad and, and just make fictitious people with heroic backstories? What, what are you going to do there? Because you also said they're paying through the nose for this. They're going to pay millions and millions of dollars to pull this thing off. And on top of that – we can talk about this later on. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But what are you going to do for camera footage? Because – it's such an epic undertaking that every major network is going to cover this thing. Every the, the entire media world will be all over this. Your the capsule should be covered with GoPro cameras, with 4K cameras. There should be so much footage from so many different angles. So how you, how are you going to fake all this? How what are you going to do when you when you're heading towards the dark side of the moon? You're going to show stars when you get to the other side? Are you going to have a camera pointing back to the Earth, to where the Earth is fading in the distance as you're heading towards the moon? Are you going to have a the moon in front of you as you're zooming in towards the moon? These are things that do not exist now. You're going to have to do unprecedented coverage. You're going to have to produce media data that has not been produced by anyone ever. So the, to, to date, as, as anyone that's followed this show knows, there has never been a piece of footage uncut that shows, well, not even uncut, that shows a rocket with a camera running with the Earth going out in the distance to where the cameras, as you know, the Earth just gets smaller and smaller. It never, ever happens. So it's uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. And and Peanut Gallery is also saying can't plan for 2028. And SpaceX came out with their Red Dragon Mars mission now scheduled for 2020. Oh, yeah. Two years. Yeah. Two years after they they do their moon mission, they're going to go to Mars. Mm hmm. 
are they going to send people to Mars? I, I'd love to. Again, if you're going to fake something, you got to make it at least somewhat believable. Here's the problem with the Mars mission. I don't want to get off on a rant here too much. The problem with the Mars mission is that you don't have a way back. Even if you could get there, even if you could land somebody, there's a reason why they say there's only a probe there. Because once you get there, forget what you see in the movies, there's no way to take off with another rocket. You know, fine, the Mars gravity supposedly isn't as, as heavy as Earth's gravity, but it's, it's not zero gravity. So how are you going to blast off with another rocket that you haven't even built that isn't even there to head back to Earth? How are you going to pull all that off? It's it's unbelievable. So uh, that's that's what just ticks me off to no end. And yes, peanut gallery says the bugs money he used a slingshot to get back. Very good. Awesome. That's really great. Uh, anyway, so let's just get into a few emails because I'm not going to take phone calls right now because we can't take phone calls at the moment. I'm glad you guys haven't just bombarded me with calls yet. And don't do it just to be smart asses or anything like that. OK, this one is called. Well, it's from Lane, and it says, Greeting, Mark. And I forgot to read this last week. Sorry, Lane. It's been nearly two years now since I fell asleep at my desk while watching vids and woke up midway through Flat Earth Clues. I feel so fortunate to be enlightened by reality. There is no going back now. Thank you. I just rewatched the Bird interview on the Long Jeans Chronoscope, and one of his statements just finalized my rejection of the fictitious continent of Antarctica. The host asked Bird if it were true that no woman had ever been on the continent of Antarctica. Paraphrasing Bird's response, well, if Antarctica is an island, then yes. It is true that no woman has ever stepped foot there, and it's the most peaceful place, etc. Continue, consider the magnitude of that answer. The foremost authority on Arctic and Antarctic exploration, a rear admiral at the highest level of the most advanced Navy on the plane with access to all info on anything he needs to know, cannot say for sure if Antarctica is a continent. Six or seven years after High Jump's exploration and expeditionary tasks, and as you know, he had numerous aircraft with 1,200-mile range capabilities at his disposal and certainly could and would have established fuel and supply stations if needed. He had to reach an ocean, Southern or Indian Ocean, before he could conclude it was a continent or he was stopped at the barrier. Remember that he had just moments before stated that an area as large as the United States existed across the pole from Little America, which would be the so-called Eastern Antarctica. West Antarctica is approximately 2 million square miles, leaving about 3.4 million square miles for East Antarctica. Most of East Antarctica has been crossed by numerous countries seeking the pole by the mid-1930s. Hitler's forces had air-mapped 20% of East Antarctica by 1930, so that couldn't be the, pre the pristine region. If you add 3.8 million square miles, the size of the U.S., to the existing 3.4 million square miles across the pole from L.A., there is too much land to fit on the sphere in the designated area, proving the continent of Antarctica is BS, assuming Bird wasn't lying, and I feel that his word was the same as being etched in granite. That's my two cents worth. I consider the bird wall, wall to be fact. Take care, Mark. Lane M, a.k.a. Skeptic936, the Rod Serling guy. Thank you very much. And again, I'm sorry that I did not read that until now. It was sitting on my desktop, and I've, I've been doing the Kyrie thing. Had, uh, oh, studio just got in. Hey, Mark, just got home. Ooh, can we do it now? Okay, we'll do it at the break. Okay, so at the first half hour, which is in oh, 10, 12 minutes from now, so we'll take calls after the bottom of the hour. So the studio just let me know. So thank you, studio, for letting me know, and we will go on from there. Yeah, by the way, if, if it seems like I was a little scattered over <clears throat> what I was pulling off uh, during the last uh, week or so, that's because of the Kyrie Irving thing, and it's still going on. It's generated so much media response out there. And if you've been living under a rock and didn't know what was happening in the flat earth world, Kyrie Irving, the championship guard, probably the best guard in the American National Basketball Association and teammates of LeBron James, the, probably the most recognizable athlete on the planet, loosely said planet there. He uh, came out and, and basically said he was a flat earther on a podcast and just before the All-Star break and everyone went crazy. In fact, I just uploaded literally 10 minutes before the show went live. I uploaded a Fox News interview where his friend Richard Jefferson 
and the woman, the, the two people in this latest interview that I uploaded, they were the other two people in that podcast. And she is much less critical of Kyrie now, which is interesting. You wonder if she has been looking into the theory and it, the knee jerk re reaction from her is gone. So I thought it was very, very interesting. And the what peanut gallery also. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill Maher. He also jumped into this. Wait a minute. Rips Kyrie on. Did he? Did he do it on something on something else? Oh, now I'm gonna have to look this. Hopefully, was it something else besides his show? Because I on Bill Maher's show, HBO show, he had a panel including Seth MacFarlane, the creator of Family Guy and American Dad, and you know who Seth MacFarlane is. And he the the panel really was was giving him a hard time and Bill Maher again it's it's that knee jerk reaction he went straight to anger mode he called called Kyrie an effing idiot which is awful which is very unpleasant so all right let's get back we got eleven minutes left that means I can get a few more emails in this one's called the composition of the sun it is from Chris. Hey Mark it's Chris I so I got an itch today and started thinking what we know of our sun now. My thought after doing some research today is that the sun is a giant ball of magnesium, burns white in chunks, it's hard to burn, and once lit is super low temperatures, lack or no oxygen and in carbon dioxide. We see it as yellow through the atmosphere, but white in high altitude balloon videos. It is also highly magnetic material. I've watched a video where this guy was talking about the rotation of the sun in the southern hemisphere, where there are high magnetic zones that cause the sun to start back to the pole this really seems feasible of our world what do you think thanks chris yeah yeah you're very possible i don't i kind of go i like the whole idea that the sun is really it doesn't not generate anything at all it's a it's a power converter it's like it literally is like a light bulb it's not combusting it's not f using any sort of fusion it is just really just a light bulb like we would build if this place was as big as I think it is then what what can you do with advanced lighting systems <laughs> so yeah let's get into this next email it's called Kyrie Irving and B.O.B. and it says hello Mark Sargent my name is Lincoln from Salt Lake City and I enjoy your show very much. I'm into conspiracy theories big time. And when I started listening to the Flat Earth Theory around November of 2015, I was hooked. To be honest, though, a 100% Flat Earther, I am not, but I am definitely not a believer in the globe model. For what I've been listening to... Oh, geez. And then now everyone's buzzing me with all sorts of stuff. Hang on one second. Uh, studio says... And, yep... Patricia Steer saw that, and Chris Studios says, let me know what you can prefer. You know what? Let's do it now. Heck, let's, why wait to the break? Let's, let's do it now so we can take phone calls. Heck, let's do it now. And we'll be down for like 60 seconds so you guys don't go away. And Peanut Gallery will let me know that we're off. And... Well, let's find out if we're going to get knocked up. Ready when you are. And Peanut Gallery will let me know. I'm just going to keep reading this, and if I get booted off, Peanut Gallery is going to let me know. So I'm still on. I know. The Let's see here. Many times the – okay, uh, I was hooked. To be honest, I was 100% flat earth – Flat Earther, I am not, but I'm definitely not a believer in the globe model. From what I've been listening to and also reading about the Flat Earth versus the globe Earth, it is really not even an argument. As you said many times, the globe Earth has nothing but empty boxes of evidence to even hold a solid argument, argument against the Flat Earth. But with that said, I'll put my little spin on Kyrie Irving and B.O.B. talking about the Flat Earth theory. B.O.B. is a rapper. His audience are not thinking about deep stuff like the earth being flat. Eh, maybe. Maybe some of them, but the majority not really. But when a mind bender like that pops up, it will cause a reaction that will grow and grow. All right. Peanut Gallery, are you there? Hey. Yeah. Perfect. All right. We'll do it. Awesome. Thanks, man. Hey, do you want to make any comments? No. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> a man of few words. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. Okay. I'll announce the phone number then. All right. All right. See ya. All right. Well, phones are working at the moment. So 
phone numbers to call in. E- oh, phone number. You could use the other number, but you know what? I'm only going to give it out one. 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. And oh, just like that. All right. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? Better not be your first time. Don't be nervous. No nervous. It's just Daryl. Hey, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, man? It's going pretty good. You know, are you still in, over there in Victoria? I think Victoria is great, you know, except for the snow that we got yesterday. That wasn't so fun. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's uh, just pissing here. Yeah. Um, I, just, I, I just needed to tell you, like, I love that you're following the Kyrie Irving thing. Oh, yeah. But if I hear one more sports panel sit around and talk like they know anything about <laughs> well, anything, I, not I to know, mention but what, 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 Honestly, <laughs> you should, you would be, I would be more surprised if they didn't have that reaction. Like, you, you've heard my speeches. If you don't attack Flat Earth the first time you hear it, then there is probably something wrong with you. And I know you, you're probably one of the different <sighs> people out there. But especially, no, I completely agree. But it's just, oh I god, I have to watch it, right? When you have, a, so I have to like Bill Maher. Oh god! Oh I, well, that Bill Maher. So horrible. Oh, that was <laughs> that was bad. He, he, but again, he's he's a passionate person. He's he he goes off on rants anyway. He'll attack. I hate him. I That's know. It. I, I, <laughs> I know. Well, what's what's bothering me is they're starting to make connections. They're they're trying to link flat earthers and Trump supporters, which I, which, which is starting to irritate me a bit because it's like okay, it's you're flat earth, you're all you're trying to make it synonymous. They're trying to hook them together, and I don't know. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. the Bill Maher they're going to make us out to be Nazis before it's over. But it well, maybe maybe not, not Nazis, but they may tie it to like a religious belief in some ways. Because in, yeah, some, they, in some ways it is. Well, yeah, it's, you know, it, it definitely goes against science, the newest religion, and goes yeah. back to the old ones. If yeah, you ask me, so. exactly. Well, um, a good point. I'm yeah, not science, really religious. If science has become really scientism where they, they make claims and leaps of faith. As I went and talked, when I debated the science educator the other day, I, I told him, look, science makes leaps of faith like anybody else, which they say, which they shouldn't, but they do. The, 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 the Earth's core, a perfect example. They say, yes, here's what the Earth's core looks like from you know every line on its way down, red and orange and yellow and white, all those different <laughs> layers. And I caught him off guard. I go, but you've only drilled down eight miles. So why don't you just put a big question mark in the middle of the book? Why, why don't you put a question mark there? And it's because they can't. They won't do it. What they do is they say, okay, this is our best guess. It's an educated guess. But eventually they leave that part out. They say it's not a guess anymore. You know, they, they, just, they just don't say it. They don't say that. Well, the- it's scientism. It's a religion. Like, yeah, it's, like it it's, there's no way around it. It's literally a religion. So and It's my pet peeve, too. Like I agree. Like, All this and, NASA shit from last year, they found Gravitron wave. Oh, right. yeah, that whole thing. Like, you know, all the stuff that's happening, like, right now, like... Did you... You saw and, the story on the SpaceX thing? Oh, man, next year, yeah. What? Because all, all the people that hate me now that are on my chat to, <laughs> at work... How? Uh, sent all day long, they try to prove to me the moon's, like, this big sphere out there, and... I got a BBC article from my buddy last night that's saying, oh, yeah, next year they're going to have tourism on the moon. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, like, I how can't... do you even respond to something uh, that ridiculous? It is a last-ditch effort. They're not, they can't. You cannot fake uh, – forget about faking a Mars mission because that's just – it's just silly because logistically you can't even make it up in, in – in, scientifically you can't come up with a good cover story. But the moon – it's too hard to fake. There's too many. What are you going to do when you don't show the camera footage? We have 4K <laughs> cameras that sell for like a hundred bucks. That you cover the entire thing with 4K <laughs> cameras. You're not going to. You cannot show the footage because the the nerd community will tear it apart. Oh, it's just I I can't. The audacity of making that claim is just mind boggling to me. It's, it's it's NASA, man. They're they're my everyone's got their own pet peeve in this thing. For me, it's people who tell me ships go below the curvature yeah. and anything 
NASA, like that. I just get reminded of that America with the K video by Ramstein. Just, right, right. You know, oh, yeah. Floating yeah. around in a swimming pool on set. And just, I, it yep. drives me out of my mind because people like, I, I get in like arguments or, well, discussions with people that, yeah. <laughs> you know, with master's degrees in co- cosmology. And it's just like, I hear you, man. Hey, hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be going we're gonna we're going to our first break. So thank you for being the first caller, by the way. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, just uh, call out to New York, Mark. Can't wait to buy him a beer in North Carolina. Can't right wait on. to see you again. All right, right on, man. And yeah, I'll enjoy the rest of the show. All right, hey, have a good one. Hey, see, see ya, man. Bye. No hype, no, 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 no fear. We are T F R Frequency Radio. Strange world where the truth is often stranger than fiction. We are taking phone calls. That is 720-897-6111. That number again is 720-897-6111. And remember, I'm taking your calls directly. So be nice because no matter where you go, there you are. While we were on break, we had a call in from New York. So 720 and others, you're going to have to wait until we're done with New York. New York's calling early tonight. Wait, wait, you got a bedtime or something to go to? What's happening? <laughs> no, no. I just was so excited I, about uh, Fake X. I just had to call. It was killing me. Oh, SpaceX I, is a piece I, of crap. I, I cannot believe they have the balls. I, I know. Mean, I, hope they have, I hope they have Ron Howard or at least J.J. Abrams. I mean, how are they going to do this? Exactly. I thought either one of two things. Either they have the (laughs) balls and they're going to make a a huge special effects effort to pull this thing off. Or the other side is somebody at the the top knows it's like, well, 2018, we're never going to make it through that anyway because something really, really weird is going to happen. So we can say anything we want. At this point, let's just jack up. Let's jack up the stock price because (sighs) – you you can't fake something like that. Meaning you I you've heard me say it. If you gave me a dump truck full of money <laughs> and and license to everybody in Hollywood that I could pick that would keep their mouths shut, I wouldn't do it. Because you can't you're not gonna be able to pull it off. Oh, there's too many there's too many things, especially if you're going to the dark side of the moon and back. You how are you gonna get all the constellations right? How well, are you like gonna you do it in real time? Cameras. Are there stars? Or maybe there aren't stars. Are, are, I don't are, know. Are there no stars? Be... How many? How many is in this crew? You're taking two tourists that aren't going to be able to help you <laughs> at all. How many is the other? Do you have you taken three other people that are going to be on this thing? And, and do we even have a capsule that'll hold five people right now? Uh, as, yeah. Oh my god. As far as I know, <laughs> I, in fact, the biggest capsule ever built supposedly only held three. Right. Two guys on the ground and yeah. one at the at that module that was like hovering over the moon, which most people don't even know how that yeah, works. Yeah, I, I don't know how they. they I, I'm just floored. I, I saw that and I I almost fell out of my seat. I was like, "What? Oh, they have Are they paint- for real in a year? In a I year? I know. It's like with with yeah. what with what testing are you gonna look here? It's it's the exact opposite. I mean, NASA dr- just drug its feet over a course of decades. To, let's put it this way: to to even take the first, if only picture, the, the first picture of the Earth from, from 1972 to 2015, they went through Apollo 8 through Apollo 17 before they even took the shot, supposedly. Yeah. Now, you're going to, I mean, even even they said in the thing, oh, it's an aggressive timetable. It's not like aggressive. No, you're, you're asking the uh, absolute impossible it, from, a, from a staging standpoint, if you wanted to fake it. And even if it was really? re- even if it was real, I, I don't, would you want to be on that thing? With an untested <laughs> no cap, if, 
real un- untested booster, untested capsule. Oh my god! And you have. Even, I don't want to get written into the history books that way. And no the, way. And, the <laughs> and the tourists they they're just starting astronaut training now. Oh yeah. That's yeah. what you want. It's, yeah. who, I mean, the, you could go the complete they, opposite direction and just blow the thing up on the pad, but kill everybody, right? Just kill everybody, yeah. supposedly. Oh, uh, bummer! We killed everybody. Let's not do this for like fifty years because we're sad. <laughs> you know, oh. Uh, oh, they only they bad. only landed. One, I, I was right? thinking they of what landed, is the stock price? Uh, did it actually go up? Did SpaceX probably? Yeah, probably. Uh, I was going to say they they only landed once on the CGI barge, right? I mean, and they're going to pull this off in a year. I, I, right, uh, right, yeah. Uh, uh, it's it's it's. No, the, I, what do they? What are they're they gonna, doing? You're you're <laughs> asking them to do something that produce things that have never been produced in the history of NASA, like the Earth falling away from the camera as you head towards the moon. It's never happened. There are no videos of this, and mm. you you will not have. have a blank slate. NASA lost everything, so they can make up whatever the hell they want. Uh. And what are you going to do? And what about the forward cameras zooming into the moon? What about the the exterior? Are these guys never going to get out of the capsule? Are there going to be no spacewalks? What, going to be- what about that everybody down here has really good telescopes and we're not going to be able to see shit? Right. Good one. Good one. You know, uh, yeah. It, yeah. I think with the reflective yeah, surface, yeah. somebody – you'd think they could retask Hubble. Uh, to, to, damn it. Now I just gave it away. Now they're going to put a balloon up. Shit. <laughs> well, what? You're going to be able to b- do a balloon that can simulate going yeah. around the moon? That's the mo- – that's that's them. That's them. I'm telling you that's them. I saw a light. Uh, it's them. Uh, it's, it's, it is my yeah. – if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, look it up. <laughs> SpaceX said oh, they are taking two people, two tourists – not just people, tourists to the moon and back. And uh, yeah, of course, they're not going to land. But that's even gives you more excuse to to put as many cameras as you want because, the, you know, it's only one rock, you know, one capsule. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it is absolutely horrendous. Yeah, I, I know. So I, I, honestly, floored. I thought that, the, 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 again, you, you've heard me say this. Them stating that they're going to colonize Mars, even though they have no no technical way of doing it that's one thing because you're just you're just kicking that can down the road but right. the, the the moon things are big anyway uh yeah, i got i got a I, yeah i'll be quick i got a mark twain for you this this is from for me this week I, this is how i feel okay always do it is right it will gratify half of mankind and astound the other you know i i think i'm I'm being a little more aggressive in not talking about flat earth. You know what I mean? I'm I got you. Laying in, I'm laying in a lot of the underlying stuff to people I'm talking to. I just mentioned, I, I really use a lot of times, because I hate to say it, but these guys are brilliant, and they use children against us. Yeah. So I'm trying to use it against them. And I always say how, it, and this is true, it angers me that they teach my child these things that, as facts, and they're still theories. Right. And you're shutting him down. What if he's the one who's going to figure it out? Yeah. What if the kid next to him was the one who was going to figure it out? But yeah. they never look at it because they believe it. You know, so I give Excellent. people that stuff. Excellent. Excellent point. And, they, and they're like, huh, huh. And they look at the core of the earth and the rotations and stuff. And and Bill Maher was a total douche. Well, he, he totally, I know. He but totally, I, I get it. He, you know, he was just a douche the way he acted, I, yeah. calling him reckless, you know, basically. that That's not, that's an underhanded thing, because we're not reckless. We're all normal people, Jesus, right. you know. We all got to, you know, put our pants on one leg at a time. We're right. insane. Um, but he was just, oh, yeah, I don't like that. All right, two, I'll go. Two, no, wait, no, no, two things before I let you go, because oh. we, we're going to, one was the, uh, the peanut gallery's throwing quotes back at you. One is okay. the first. The first quote is: "I never teach my pupils. I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they can learn." That's Albert Einstein, and this other one's Albert too. It's reading after a certain age diverts the mind too much from its creative pursuits. Any man who reads too much and uses his own brain too little falls into lazy habits of thinking. Mm-hmm. So pretty good. Oh, be, hey, before you oh, go, yeah. because you just created yeah. your bre- your brand new YouTube channel, right? Oh uh, yes, and That's so good. go ahead and go ahead and give it out. Uh, it's uh, conspiracy theory. I'm sorry, conspiracy theories and flat Earth. Okay. And basically, I'm going on a journey of discovery, and I'm going to explain how I got into this, how I started, 
And I'm going to try and maybe open a few eyes and, you know, just basically get it off my chest because it's hard just talking to the dog, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I've had enough of that. And and what's, what's the, uh, what's the channel name? Oh, it's uh, conspiracy. Oh no, it's my, it's my channel. Zulu one. Sorry. But Z U L U O N E. Sorry. Z U L U O N E. Sorry. So if you guys get a chance, you can, you can watch Mark and his incredible journey down the conspiracy rabbit hole and his channel is called zulu one yes right on thank you thank you i appreciate it oh no no worries at all man i i already subscribed i already liked your first video and i you you saw my comments like hey narrative with a slideshow can't go wrong in my book so nice nice excellent thank you i I do appreciate it i just i didn't want to be boring i didn't want to be preachy either you know i just like i said i just want to be honest who i am what this is what's going on in my head <laughs> i hear you man. that kind of thing all right hey if, um, I could, if i if i could give a shout out to uh lee warmer okay i was talking to him today we were on the phone for like three hours talking flat earth right he's on. got some interesting stuff about distances and the math <laughs> oh man very interesting very right. interesting right on man and yeah. uh, all righty thank you it's awesome hey. Thank you, Mark. No worries at all, man. You have a good rest of your evening, okay? All right. You too. And, right. Oh, and to the gentleman on before, I want to buy him a shot. I keep forgetting his name. I'm so sorry. Oh, Daryl. Daryl, thank Darryl, you. Daryl, he'll, he'll be at the conference, I'm, I think. I'm a retard. I'm oh, no a retard, worries. but I'll buy him a shot. Okay. <laughs> See you, man. Awesome. Thanks. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Uh, I'm sorry to all the people that were trying to call in just that second. All right. First one that gets in. Okay. Five, six, one. We're picking you up first. You are live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? Hello, this is Phil McKenzie, Toledo, Ohio. Hey, what's going on, man? Not too much. Just wanted to mention a few things. The whole flat earth thing woke me up around the same time that you did. I watched your video probably about two months after. But little things like Japanese anime, there's some shows like Hunter x Hunter, that the last episode, he just finds out the world that he was like, discovering or whatever it was just a smaller part showed a flat earth map and this huge infinite plane i was like what <laughs> and i can go on with like a half dozen of those but nice. uh nice. did you did you but uh, i just want oh go ahead go I'm ahead sorry no no go ahead keep going i just wanted to thank you for what you do and give a shout out to patricia because she was one of them that really got me onto the whole flat earth journey and if if at some point could you Try to interview Flat Water, Flat Earth about the whole North Pole thing. Sure. Flat Water, Flat Earth. He's got okay. some really – Glenn, I think his name is, but he's got some really interesting stuff on there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd be happy to do it. I, I've been a little busy at the moment, but sure. Sure. Why not? Hey, by the way, did you – what? because you were mentioning anime movies. You know, I had a chance to watch it in its, in its entirety, Sausage Party, which – it's probably you know not a movie for children, even though it is an animated movie. <laughs> but right. it, it was I, I couldn't believe it. by the time I got to the end when the guy in the wheelchair spoilers was rocketed. The the store is the only grocery store I've ever seen which was covered in a glass dome, and and the rocket <laughs> chair busted through you know punched a hole in it on its way out and exploded. I was going, really? That is, and the, that the whole world was was simulated, and they weren't. Once they not only did they realize they were food, that the 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 outside world wasn't what they thought, but then they realized they were cartoons, and it was completely imagined reality. It was just bizarre. But yeah, anyone wants to see a weird, and of course somebody's done a video on this, but I thought it was very very interesting. Again, do not recommend the language because it is not safe for any kids, but it's mm-hmm. a fascinating movie. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, but right on, Mr. Sergeant. Hey, you do. any any shout outs you want to give? Oh no, I'm good. <laughs> I want to keep search because I'm talking to people and and some of them thought I was crazy, but it only takes a couple minutes for the picture. So, well, I, you know, let's put it this way: if, Kai, if if you're crazy, then Kyrie Irving is crazy as well. Uh, brilliant, well, you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, anything else before I send you off? Oh, no. Thank you. Hey, you have a good rest of your evening, okay? You too. Okay. Bye-bye.
All right, phone number to call in. We still got time. 720-897-6111. That is, eh, let's take another one. This one's, I know the area code. You are on live with Strange World right now. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, man, I'm Andre, I'm from New York. Hey, what's Um, going on, New York? Not much, man. I would just like for you to pay for my psychiatrist. (laughs) Because uh, I'm because I'm insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I mean, just uh, open up. You know, just appreciate everything you do. You know. Oh. Yeah. Um, but just I, I just wanted to uh, mention something. Um, just an observation I've done. Um, so, um, I lived about. Mm, I want to say. Ninety miles from New York City. I'm from New York. Okay. And um, last year, during the 4th of July, you know, I'm a truck driver, mm-hmm. and I'm driving towards the city. I'm on, uh, in a, uh, I'm on 87, and I can see the light from, you know, from, let's say, 70 miles away. Sure. I can see the light. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm like, what? what is that? So I'm following, I'm following it. And as I get closer to the city, um, I realize is the Empire State, uh, is you know the old I'm sorry the old Twin Towers. Yeah. The monument for you know the the light. The new like, the new Man. building. Yeah. yeah. Every I guess every fourth you know I mean, I'm sorry every September 11th they light them up. Yep. And I'm like, how is that possible? So then you know from then I'm I'm starting to realize that you know it's it's got to be flat. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So I know. I, I just, it, everyone was in the same boat. Everyone assumed that it was curved. Again, new listeners out there. Everyone assumes that it's a ball because you're told it's a ball. Everyone believes it. And and pilots, the pilots that I've talked to over the last year and a half, they were all in the same boat, which is there's this weird, weird paradox for pilots. Because you know, when pilots get up there, 30, 40,000 feet, they see nothing but flat. It's, you know, they're flying above the weather and, and they see nothing but a flat horizon, no matter where they turn. And they say, well, it looks flat, but we're told it's a sphere, so it's got to be a sphere, right? And they're they're in a rough boat because who do you tell if you're a pilot? It's really – it's mm. again, you're not alone. Everybody fall, fell into the same trap. I use the P.T. Barnum saying, the guy that says, you know, there's a sucker born every minute. He was the guy that said some of the people can be fooled all the time and all of the people mm. can be fooled some of the time. And that was this case. Was, yeah. Everybody got tricked. It was the – Greatest street magic trick ever. It's brilliant. So, any? Well, uh, yeah. Well, anything? no. I'm just uh, that was that was pretty much it. I probably call in some other times, but you know, okay. I was actually um, doing the uh, the flight time casino, <clears throat> checking out some uh, flight routes. Yeah. And my wife walked in, and she's like, "Where are you going?" And I'm like, "I'm um, <laughs> <laughs> just checking out some stuff." And I'm like, "Stick around, listen to this." And she's like, "Nope." Because you know she thinks I'm I'm a nut, but you know uh, that's all right. Again, if if she was if she didn't <laughs> think you were a nut right away, I'd be worried. At that point, I'd sleep with you. Yeah. So. And I actually, I actually bought your book, and I just oh, bought. Nice. I mean, I had already listened to your um to your um YouTube for a while, but I just bought it just because I, I wanted to have it around the house. Sure. And uh, one of her friends showed up to the house, and uh, she's like, "Oh yeah." And he, he believes in the flat earth. Tell him about it. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I got to tell her, her friend. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this and that. I'm like, you check out this YouTube guy, you know. Yeah. But it's funny. But, hey, I appreciate everything you're doing. Hey, thank you for calling in, man. And hope, hopefully we'll talk to you again. Yeah, I'm trying to – I'm, I'm going to see if I can um, – I go to the Bear Mountain once in a while, and I can see the city. But I'm going to see if I can go to the Catskills. Oh, okay. And try to get, like, an extra Zoom – camera or something yeah i'm gonna figure it out and do it see how and, close I can and get. if you don't want to make put the video up yourself send it to me i'll I'll tell you how to send it to me and and we'll uh we'll get the video up definitely yeah all right all right cool hey man have a good one you too all right all i'll right. see you all right phone number to call in is 720-897-6111 and i know people have just been calling in non-stop that number again is seven tears a phone call right there this one looks like it's colorado we'll find out 720 that's got to be colorado yeah that's me hey i'll turn turn down turn down your radio in the back i did i did hey mark um i had talked to you way back when when this first 
thing first came out, I was I was like one of your first fifty, you know, viewers probably on all your videos. Right on. I talked to you and uh I had asked you questions about uh meteor in the gravity. You told me about the molecular uh molecular magnet. molecular magnetism, yeah. Yep, yep. And then uh, I said, oh, so we, and then I said, well, we could be in California and you just go straight and we would hit Antarctica. And you were like, yeah, yeah, we would. And I said, and then I said, uh, well, uh, something about we're a snow globe on the desk. Do you remember that? <sighs> I said, so we could possibly be a snow globe on the on desk. Oh, cat. sure, sure. Something or like in Rob Skiba's terms, God's footstool. But yeah, I remember. Yeah. And then I remember you were on uh, George Norrie and you had said the same thing. Yeah, we could possibly be a snow globe on the desk. Sure. And I was like, dude, he just quoted me. <laughs> oh, dude, I can't even believe I'm talking to you right now, but I am a flat earther because of you. Oh, thanks. Um, Jaronism, uh, Eric Dubé. Cool. Odd TV, reality, all you guys. You know what right I'm saying? Um, I live on, on a flat earth plane where the star, moon, and sun revolve around my head. Right on. That's the way. That's again. It's the way of the future right now. Everyone's everyone's waking up. You probably you probably caught all the media firestorm when Kyrie Irving came out last week. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been I've been watching. I mean, dude, I, I watch all your videos. Oh, thanks. I'm on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm on it. I have your books. I have several other books. Uh, Zen Garcia. That you know. Oh yeah, Zen books. Zen Garcia talking about the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch, which looks like it's pretty much a instruction manual for how this world is built. Right, right. I have the the other one, Terra Firma, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of that Parallax books. Your Flat Earth Clues, of course. Nice. And right now, I'm working on uh, trying to get my my wife's family involved. They're hardcore uh, Bible thumpers, and you know, I ask them a question: Do you believe the Bible is real? Yeah, yeah. Well, do you believe the Earth is flat? Oh no, obviously not. So now I'm just starting to like work on them and. Yeah, I'm between right between, or wrong. between Zen and Rob Skiba, that's where you'd probably want to focus because Rob is doing such bang up job and and he's about he he's right up their alley. Yeah, they're just not interested. Right. You know, there are just people who are just not interested. Yeah, I know. My I mean, my sister like, is perfect. Yeah. This is like crazy. Yeah. Um, but there, there have been a lot of people that I have talked to. And it's really easy. I just basically just tell them about the water. You see that cup of water? The top surface of it is flat. The hot tub, or every time you take a piss, yeah. the toilet water, it's flat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Flat surface. And then we go all the way from the hot tub, swimming pool, to a dam, reservoir, lake, river. I mean, not river, uh, the sea. Yeah. And then when I, and I, when I get to the ocean, I say, what is it? And they go, it's flat and level. And I said, that's right. There's no such thing as curved water. No. And it snaps in their mind, and all of a sudden, they're just like, yeah. Out. I mean, wa water, of it, course, it's crazy thing. water, of course, curves when you get to a very, very small amount, like just a few drops. But that's just water tension. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, a drop yeah. of water. But I mean, a drop of water compared to 332 million square miles of water. Exactly. And, and, and in each square mile, there's 1.1 trillion gallons. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. I mean, the whole thing is just utterly ridiculous. I just say, no, no, use your mind to being deceived. Yeah, I I hear you, man. That's awesome. That's that's great. The uh, and well, this your is this, is this your first time calling in? Uh, yeah, actually, I I seen your uh, little advertisement on YouTube. I watched it on TV through my Xbox. Ah. and it said it says uh yeah you're gonna have the show tonight and I, I was upstairs watching the presidential thing and then I, I my son came down and my wife was there and I said you know what. Mark Sargent's son, I think I'm going to give him a call. And right then my son was like, yeah, go troll him. Go troll him. I was <laughs> go like, I troll call him. him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't get I, you, you, you. If you've heard, you heard the show, I hardly get any trolls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I haven't heard any, really. I had that one guy that was calling me names for a couple of weeks, and then, then he went away. And who knows? Maybe he's a flatter than that. I'm not sure. But He probably is. I mean, if you actually sit back and look at the information, I mean, you're either going to believe the lie or you're going to believe the truth. Yeah, yeah, you're going to hold right on. Yeah, right. there's some people that will hold on to the globe. They absolutely will oh, yeah. until they hear it from a mainstream source. Until, like my sister, sure. until Fox News actually does a story where he said, just so you know, the world is flat. Until that happens, my sister will not believe it. 
She, there's right. nothing. And I, you're expecting you're expecting the liars to tell you the truth, and well, it's yeah. never going to happen. Yeah, I know. Well, again, it, there could be some ul- ulterior motives coming down the pipe. We'll find out. I'm still mm-hmm. still hopeful. Yeah, we'll I mean, the 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 amount of attention it it got over this last week. There's going to be so many more people looking to, into this now, and so many younger right. people that I I can't wait. It's going to be such a great year. So yeah, it is. Any uh, any shout outs before I send you off into the night? No, not at all. No shout outs. You don't have anybody. Everybody. You don't want to say God hi to your wife. Everybody, you don't want me to. That's it. Just God bless everybody. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hey. my wife's here. Hey, f- feel free. By the way, you know, I'm, I'm as far as I know, I'm doing this every Tuesday. So feel free to call in again on on next week. Okay. All right. Well, you have a good night. Thank All you. right. Hey, have a good one. See you, man. All right. Bye. 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 All right. Phone number to call in is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. And we're, you know, what if we, if somebody calls in in the next sixty seconds, you're probably gonna have to sit through the break. Because we're going to break here in about 90 seconds. Heck, maybe we'll do an email before then. This one's called, thank you. I was surfing the web, extremely bored when I came across your video about the earth being flat. I was very, very confused and in disbelief at first. But as I removed any and all pride as I listened, 775, call back in three minutes, okay? I began to believe you and I want to thank you for opening my eyes in a new light. Note the back of the dollar bill says Novus Ordo seclorium which is latin for new world order or new order of the ages and i just wanted to point that out can i do one more before then this one's called they're hiding god mark i just watched your vid it was really well done i became geocentric about 18 years ago about after reading the bible the last few years i realized the earth is really flat i went and visited the creation museum in kentucky and actually had a chance to ask ken ham about the earth not moving he said our ministry doesn't take a stand on heliocentric or geocentric it did though in the arc portion heliocentric was the flavor of the day very sad and the answers were in genesis no less which if you don't know is his ministry i have been a fervent bible believer and have noticed much over the years i recently have seen leviticus 10 where strange fire was offered to the lord I have talked with believers, and they think I've lost my mind. These are the ones who celebrate Christmas with a holy gleam in their pious eye. Christmas is not found or commanded in Scripture. There really is a lot of strange fire burning under the firmament. Andy. Andy. You stay through the break. Yep. Okay, stay there. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. And while we were on break, we had a call come in. Where are you calling from, caller? Colorado. <laughs> What's happening out in Colorado? Hey, did you know, by the way, well, you'll know tomorrow, I got my uh, call, first Colorado Flat Earth license plate from... Uh, I heard that. I know. I show. Very cool. It was weird because you know, I, I just came from Colorado, so I was really used to seeing that plate. And I was thinking in an alternate timeline, that would have been my plate had I stayed in Colorado. 
it should have stayed. Yeah, I was there for twenty years. It's a long time. So yeah, what um what's on your mind? What are we talking about? So what we're talking about is your hero. Which one, NDT or Bill Nye? Yeah, NDT. Oh Lord, what has he done now? Oh, no, he didn't do nothing. I was thinking about something when he was doing his little show with Joe Rogan. Oh yeah, because I was going to mention that on Flat Earth News because when you, you yeah. that was one of the and first ones. Yeah. Talking about uh, you know, God know your physics and all that. Yeah. So here's my physics for him. Comets come in way out far, go around the sun, shoot back out. Yep. What brings them back? Excellent point. So when a comet, and you're talking like Halley's Comet, like a big, long trajectory right. comet that takes 70 every 76 some, years, it comes back. 76 years. So when it's Halley's Comet, when it leaves the solar system, what in the heck makes it turn around and come back towards our sun? Exactly. And not just come back. You can remember, if the, war, if the solar system is traveling at half a million miles an hour, how is that comet catching up to the sun speeding past it going back out it, it is how you're absolutely right what what gravitational force is pulling that comet back every time so common theory throughout the internet i guess and most science world yes. assume that it's no it's the gravitation pull of the sun yeah so here's a problem with that i see if the sun has that much gravity to yank a comet that it just slung shot out that far how the hell is mercury still by it yeah 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 it makes excellent. no sense on the physics excellent point excellent point it's i i i remember when you first brought this up to me and i thought it was fascinating because yeah what produces the slingshot effect on a comet and then if mercury is so closed how is that even how is that working if, yeah. if yeah, some people think, and even some scientists say, there was like, what is that, Nibiru or Planet X way out there that they're slingshotting around. Yeah, yeah, but whatever. The problem well, I mean, that, if it's a, if yeah, I mean, I I bought into what? the binary star system for a while. I totally bought into that. Okay, say it was. Now, if that secondary whatever the hell it is is out there orbiting our sun or whatnot, yeah, Halley's comet comes back every seventy six years. Right. It'd have to come around our sun, slingshot, and point back towards that exact object that's in an orbitable path around yeah. while the solar system is moving through the Milky Way, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That is beyond coincidence. Yeah, I agree. And you have all these other comments coming in a different path. So yeah. it, I would like – NDT to check his physics on that. Well, the guy he's, he's not, not going to be able to he's not going to be able to touch it. You know that because oh, this, I know this, he can't. This is the same guy that during the Joe Rogan interview, and I'll mention that it's on the Flat Earth News. It's literally the first thing. If I type in Flat Earth and I hit the filter to one week, it's the first thing that comes up. It's already got a quarter million hits, which is they were talking about the sniper trajectory. You know how a sniper has to account for the Coriolis effect. Now you know I got mad at that. <laughs> oh, I bet I bet you did, and. Then the then he has then he asked him what Neil th- you know what the drop was at the, the 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 curvature of the Earth after one mile Neil didn't know it's not like he forgot and had to catch it later he literally did not know what the curvature of the Earth was for the first mile and yep. I will say this because I I was mi- I I misrepresented him on Patricia's show where I said he only had his master's in astrophysics he actually has his PhD in astrophysics which makes that even worse that question even yep. worse for him. It's like, okay, you've actually got your PhD in astrophysics and this flat earth thing's been going around now for, you know, at least in his world, at least for a year. He doesn't have the the curvature of the earth committed to memory at this point, like all flat earthers do. I'll give you two things, mainly for your viewer listeners out there on that whole Coriolis effect crap. Yeah. So if they had to take into account the Coriolis effect, that means they would have to know at what angle, according to the Earth, is spinning that they're shooting at. Right. right. One. Sniper is not going to do that. Me being military knows sniper doesn't have that equipment. Yep. In fact, none of our stuff has that equipment. Yeah. Number two, he also said something interesting. Okay. When he went into the whole 
drop the ball, shoot the bullet, teddy bear. Oh, whatnot, right. If you drop a ball and shoot a bullet, it'll land, they'll land at the exact same time. Okay. So let's say that is true. Yeah. If you're shooting, let's, if you're shooting it flat and you know, flat trajectory, you know, you're not lobbing it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's, let's say it's true. Let's say it's true. Okay. Now he says the earth is curved. Yes. Which means, let's say when a tank fires its bullet, right? Yeah. That round leaves a gun tube and it's flying out there. Yep. By his own definition, they're going to hit the ground the same. It's going to still hit the ground the same time as it would if you dropped it. Yeah. But if, quote, the earth is curved. Yeah. Well, that means it has further to drop. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, if you have enough velocity on it, like a rail gun, that thing's not going to land for quite a while. And if you can get enough velocity, you know, you know where I'm going with this. If you can get yeah. escape velocity, it's never going to land. So, Which is why the ISS supposedly yeah. runs to free fall. Yeah, it's constantly falling. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know. So, but the whole Coriolis effect for all the listeners is crap. I know. <laughs> I I absolutely. Uh, I, I, yeah. Because. Go ahead. I mean, if you think about it, they always say you know you got to calculate the Earth's coming up. Well, how do you know what angle you're shooting at according to the Earth's rotation? I mean, what if you're firing north? Right. Then yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. Have it's to the two things. For left and right. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Not only do you have to know what angle you're firing at in relation to where you are on the globe, but you also have to figure out where you are on the globe because the rotation is going to be different depending on if you're like say in your North America versus Panama. Yep. Yeah. And then in what degree you're firing at? North, oh. south, east, west. Uh, oh my god! It would be I, calculations. Oh, that would be a bitch to be an artillery guy at that point. Or a missile guy. Or, they don't have it in there. <laughs> yeah. It's, ugh, it'd be awful. The, um, the other thing, so, yeah, so Neil and Rogan did their thing on, I think it was a Monday. Because, yeah, it was six days ago or two, Wednesday? Wednesday. Tuesday. It doesn't matter. And then a few days later, TMZ caught Neil talking. You probably watched that one, too, where Neil looked like he was super baked. And he went on to say, well, you know, he can he can think what he wants, but he's basically stick to basketball. Don't do not comment. Basically, if you're not in science, you have no right to comment about science. If you're not, a, you know, what, not a Ph.D. or in, in whatever department, which, right. of course, then begs the question, OK, then why does the media keep interviewing Bill Nye? Because Bill Nye doesn't have a master's literally in anything. He's got a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. So why why does he have to comment on everything from climate change to meteors to alien life forms to he, he, they drug him into that whole deflate gate thing with the footballs? They actually drug yep. him on CNN to talk about that. And one last thing, yeah. simply to NDT, yeah. by him saying that he's going against his mentor, Carl, Carl Sagan. Sagan. Yeah. Who, by the way, is a child I loved. Oh, yeah. Still do. Yeah. Good theories. But his whole purpose was he always wanted to get, quote, science, the truth, yeah. for people to learn and expand their minds to everybody, yeah. not just if you go to college and get a degree. Yeah. I know. I know. Carl Sagan fit well with that group back in the 70s and early 80s. The whole, I mean, that the PBS. That's when that's when PBS ruled. PBS could do no wrong. Well, we only had three other channels, so yeah. I know, but I mean, you had the powerhouses, and then you had PBS. Yeah. So, and by the way, one one thing before I let you go, I thought it was interesting that even though Kyrie got a massive amount of mainstream media exposure, he was notably absent on the major networks when it came to television. Television is still the lowest common denominator out there. And NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox did not run stories on it, but not, not at least on television. Of course, there were little blurb. You know, CNN had a couple articles and, and other people did their thing, but they did not. You didn't see Anderson Cooper talking about it. You didn't see Bill O'Reilly mentioning it. They, they, oh, you won't. No, they won't touch that. What do you think, though, if, if, if ESPN was, running, was it was this just the next level where they say, OK, let's see what happens if we bring it in through the sports net. You know, we, we tried entertainment. Let's see what happens in the sports world. 
And it did not disappoint. The sports world absolutely erupted because you know, all sports sports personalities are trained to give boring interviews. And this was so far out there that they had to cover it. Oh, by the way, real quick before I go, because yeah. no time's running out. Yeah. I got a new um, thing for you to use when you're describing, you know, you get all these questions about how planes, because I saw that one thing on sports, if plane goes east, they'll fall off the earth and all that. Yeah. Got something new for you to try. Yeah. My kids are watching Daytona, awesome race. How do the cars go around the track and get back to the start point? They go in a circle. They go in a circle. Well, that, I mean, that's the easiest way for you to explain it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and while while I'm at it, there was somebody that called me up and mentioned, you know, we, we keep – there's this one thing that keeps bugging some flat earthers, and that is how the globalists will keep referring to their world as round. And it's like, no, 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 you, you can't. Remember, it's, it's flat earth versus a globe or a sphere – because a dinner plate technically is still round. It is round. Yeah. Which is why when the, the Indy, I thought it was interesting that the Indy 5, you know, because it's now become the sports question to ask sports people. They asked the Indy 500 winner or last year's winner about Kyrie's statement. He goes, well, if you fly in a certain direction, you will, you'll end up coming back to the same place. But I thought that was interesting because this is a guy that literally drives in a circle for a living. He just makes a well, big left hand turn circle. Not Indy. Well, yeah, Indy. Yeah, Indy. Yeah, Indy. Yeah, Indy. yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's like, you think he would have figured that one out, or it would have sunk in eventually. That you know, you drive around the same thing, but there's your conditioning for you. This guy literally just drives in a circle all day, and he still didn't get it. Nope. No. Anyway, any uh, any uh, shout outs? No, no shout outs. All right. Well, I'm going to jump right into Flat Earth News and hopefully we can knock awesome. that out in a couple of minutes. All right. All right, good good man. One. See ya. Okay. Real quick, I'm going into YouTube. I type in Flat Earth and set the filter to this week. And what happened? A lot of stuff happened this week. One, Joe Rogan came out, interviewed Neil deGrasse Tyson because of the whole Kyrie Irving thing. And they talked for quite a while. Uh, hang on one second. Let's see if we can pick this one up. 303 area code. 303 area code. Can you hold on with me for like 60 seconds? Don't make any noise. Yes. Okay. The Patricia Steer did her show where she interviewed Amber Plaster, who made what probably will be the best song, Flat Earth Song of the Year on episode 146. And by the way, I'm going to be on episode 147 with her tomorrow at 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. ODD TV was interviewed by Sean Karen on True Frequency Radio, which you're listening to right now. Jaron did his show with Cathexis. Globusters did another thing. I think Globusters was – Bob was interviewed by somebody. Matt got married, and you can see his new wife on the NASA channel. Red Pill Philosophy jumped in on this. He, he has a bunch of subscribers. He's got 170,000 subscribers. That's not small change. Rob Skiba released a – did a wonderful conference, Flat Earth Conference in Amsterdam, and he released a bunch of videos on that. Great timing for him. Uh, I just released the Fox Sports thing where Richard Jefferson is big out. Uh, hot potatoes never starts on time. I know, right? The Richard Jefferson, uh, uh, Kyrie, one of his best friends. Basically, the two p- other people that were from that podcast where Kyrie came out, they actually went on Fox Sports and were talking about this. And she was way more open-minded, which I thought was really, really cool. And let's see if there's anything else in the second page before we take it over to the caller. Fox Dish Nation covered it. Kyrie Irving and Flat Earth. That was pretty short. The longest one I've seen so far was maybe five minutes, five, six minutes. And the conference, I did another thing on that. Flat Earth Asshole doing his stuff. ESPN Radio, Mike and Mike, did, yeah, did their thing on Kyrie Irving, which is interesting. That was like three and a half minutes. That was on radio, ESPN Radio. So let's just kind of stop it there, and let's just get right back to the caller. So where are you calling from? It's Tony from Denver. Hey, Tony. What's on your mind, man? I heard you say earlier that uh, the stock price is going to go up for SpaceX. Got to. Yeah, yeah and, and they don't have a, a stock right now. They, they've never issued a public offering. They're not a public company? Are you kidding? I did not know this. No, they they don't have an IPO yet. Uh, they keep talking about it, but uh, one that's, has not been issued. That's interesting. I would have thought they would have had an IPO by now, but maybe there's a reason. Maybe all this hype is because they're going to go public. Who knows? Maybe that's maybe that's why I they're think, doing it. 
the reason they can't offer one is because investors would be looking for assurances. Um, oh. And it, just imagine if they had people on board a, a rocket that it blew up and everybody died and what would happen to their stock price. Good point. Good point. I, yeah, Same. I don't think they'll do it until somebody fakes going to Mars and then maybe they'll do it. Maybe. maybe. But you, you got an interesting point there because that's you're you're exactly right. NASA, for example, when you look at it, NASA was never going to let anybody die in their fake space program on the moon because the moon is a permanent object that everybody can see, meaning you're never going to want to turn the moon into a headstone because that just makes people sad. People would look up, it's like, oh, those poor astronauts. Like, even if even if they didn't crash on the moon, if they, something went wrong and they couldn't lift off and they died because of oxygen deprivation in their fake program. You'd never want to do that because it would put a negative connotation on the moon. There's nothing you can do to fix it. So, yeah, yeah, and you're right. That's that's a very interesting point. Thanks for 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 making that 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 observation because I, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. It keep, keep the the few, fewest amount of people involved in the SpaceX program. Good one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Um, Hang on. The peanut gallery did mention, though, that Elon Musk does have his own stock on Tesla and Solar City. Hmm. Yeah, those are other companies. Yeah, they're other companies. He's not the, the complete owner of those, only partial owner. Right. But, uh, right. He's also, I, um, I did not realize, he has quite an acting career. I did not know that either. Somebody pointed that out. <laughs> well, if you're going to go to space, you better be a good actor. Not the truth. Any Anything else? Yeah, I wanted to uh, talk about the Kyrie Irving, and I think there's something more important that you're missing is LeBron James saying the Earth is flat. Oh, I, I didn't miss it. Cut. I, I didn't miss that. <laughs> I, I, that I, in fact, I thought I was going to pass out when I saw LeBron during All Star Weekend on camera. When when he when he mentioned to Kyrie, who happened to be in the booth right next door to him, I while I watched that entire thing, posted it, put it up there. Oh, I'm super thrilled about that. The fact that he didn't shoot it down and said, if Kyrie believes in it, that's okay. You know, he can, you know, he didn't say it in a derogatory way and thought it was awesome. Yeah. LeBron James, the, the, probably the most recognizable sports figure in the world right now. And just him doing that. I mean, it granted, it wasn't a ringing endorsement of flat earth, but it exposed so many people to it. So many younger people. How many Google searches, now, you know, have what happened because of that? So yeah. Well, what I what I would do is put it in a loop and just play it over and over again at the beginning, the middle, the end of your shows, and just have Le, LeBron James saying "Flat Earth" over and over again. That's you know how point. much money it takes to get him to endorse. Oh, I or know. Say anything. I, I, that's and what you, I was you've thinking. gotten it for free. I was thinking that even if you could get his agent to agree to it, how many millions of dollars would it take for him to endorse something that he's never me- mentioned before? Millions, millions of dollars. If you, if he would even agree to it, and there's tons of stuff he wouldn't. You know, he's got to approve it. If it isn't a shoe company or something that's related to uh, you know the sports world. He doesn't. He doesn't generally talk about. It. So yeah, good point. You know what? I'm going to chop up his video and uh, start using it. <laughs> yeah, it was given to you for free, so you should use it. I, I, um, good. One last thing I got for you. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you about global warming. Is that a complete hoax as well? I don't think it's a hoax. I think that it's part of. If it's an enclosed system, then it's an automated response. So let's say if the Heart Project, even though it was initially intended to try to break through this thing, turned out to be a weather control device, all anything – if you're messing with the weather, then there's going to be a backlash. No different than your car's air condi- conditioning system kicking in if you bring in a propane heater and have somebody in the back seat using it. It's the, the, I think the system is sophisticated enough to where it's going to compensate, but unfortunately it's not – it doesn't apparently – it's not so sophisticated that it can completely neutralize everything without some weird weather happening. So I think they're related. I, I think that we're messing. We have the ability to mess with the weather enough that the the structure is not fighting back. It's just compensating. So yeah, but I do think it's real. I, I do. Do I think it's global warming or do I think it's climate change? Because that's the term that everyone's using now. I don't know. I mean, I'm up in an area right now. We've gotten snow where they haven't had snow in a long time, and 
we got, I was in the middle of a rainstorm in Colorado, you know, a few years back that they've never ever, you know, the 500 year rain, which never ever seen and everyone got flooded out. So yeah, especially up in Estes Park. Oh, Jesus. I was in Boulder. That was amazing. I was in Boulder. I've never seen rain like that. In fact, I'll describe, I can describe it for you. If people don't know what I'm talking about, there was a week, it was about 2013, where it the it, on Monday it rained an inch on Tuesday it rained two more inches and on Wednesday it rained nine inches and there were skylights in the place I was living and it was like you know because you can kind of feel the intensity of the rain and it was like somebody had a rain engine above the state or at least that part of the state and it just if you can imagine just somebody just hitting the gas and flooring it and it never let up there was this part where the, it was just this constant intensity of rain, uh, uh, just a torrential downpour for hours and hours. And by the time my friend called me up, because I was gaming, you know, my, the power didn't go out in my, my building. And my friend called me up because, hey, dude, I'm going to bring the truck over. We're going to drive out and see the damage. I go, what damage? He goes, dude, where have you been? He goes, it's incredible. I go, what? He goes, go turn on the television. It's, uh, so, yeah, it was, it was nuts. So, yeah, do I believe in climate change? Yeah, I do. Uh, do I think that we're partially responsible? You bet I do. Anyway, anything else you want to throw out before I start grabbing other people? Nope. Thanks, Mark. Hey, you have a good rest of your evening, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. See ya. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Phone number to call in. Oh, geez. We're coming up another break already. 720-897-6111. 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean it's me. Let's read this email. Real quick from some guy in Croatia. Ah, crap. Nope, we're going to take this call. 704, you are on live with Strange World. Where are you calling from? North Carolina. Hey, North Carolina. Hey, it's Candy. Hey, how are you? I'm good, huh? What, uh, what's going on? Okay, well, first off, I took my week off for November. <laughs> Wow, you really planning in advance. I don't oh, even yeah. I don't even know what's happening in November, but I'm gonna be there, so <laughs> um, but I got I got an issue. Um I uh, my best friend and my boyfriend, these two dudes, uh my best friend is very much into conspiracies, just like me. I mean, he went down the flat earth route and he actually stopped like he I mean, it took me a good fifteen months probably to get convinced one hundred percent, but he he's entertaining it, but he's not all the way there. And he says the biggest reason is being um, so many people aren't going to keep their mouths shut for some so long. And he understands that it's not every person in every place that knows, but it's still a good lot of people. Sure. And like they say, the only way never to get caught if you do something is to never tell anybody. So oh. even just a few people knowing that would implode somebody. And then, I mean, I, I I just don't know what to say to, like, my, my boyfriend, he's new in all of this. Like, he's been introduced to none of it until he met me. But he's, like, trying to figure it all out. And without doing a bunch of research like I did, I don't know what is the best thing to tell them to make them all the way see it. Well, again, you don't, it's not like you're going to convince them right off the bat. In fact, all you have to do is plant the seed and let them figure out their own path. I'll tell you, tell you what, we're going to, we're going to keep talking about this. And once the music plays, stay on with me and I'll pick you up after the break. Okay. As well. So don't go away. Once you, once you hear the music, uh, okay. we'll, we'll talk for a few minutes after that as well. But you, all you have to do is plant the seeds. So what I tried to do, and I created a playlist for this, was the playlist is called Flat Earth for Flat Earth Short Maybe. Short. Oh, the short list. The yeah. short list for new people. And I try to. I say, look, pick something in, in your comfort zone. So if you want to see a five minute video, pick a five minute video. You want to see something that's two hours, you got the time. Watch something that's two hours. You're go they're going to have to go through several different ones, but everyone's got their own speed. So you, there's no, there is no magic thing right now that we have in the community that applies to everybody. It is an 808. I know, I know you're calling in, but you're going to have to wait till after the break. Well, I'll get you in the last segment. I promise. Okay. 808. So sorry. The, the, 
uh, we try to hit them with the shotgun approach. Oh crap, we're going to break. So stay with me, okay? Okay. Three minutes. You're listening to the Truth Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. Welcome back to Strange World. I'm Mark Sargent, and this is the last segment, and I promise I will try to squeeze in as, in as many calls as I can. North Carolina is on the phone right now, and we were talking about what is a way to get new people into Flat Earth. Somebody close to you that may not believe, what's, what can you hit them with? I always recommend the Flat Earth shortlist, and any specific, you know, just if it was me, I would, and there's a reason why the shortlist is 90% not me is that everyone's got their own taste. Some people are into ODD. Some people are into Eric Dubé. Some people are into Rob Skiba. If they're a religious person, for example, I'd throw them Rob Skiba and Zen Garcia. If they're super scientific-minded, I would throw them Zeteticism.com or DITRH or Brian Mullen. It really, yeah. There's so many different ways you could go at it. You just kind of – they've got to pick their own path. There's, I will say this, though. There's so much content out there at this point that – Yeah, because I think – um, my boyfriend, I think ODD would probably be somebody for him to watch. Yeah, there you go. I, again, any look at the people that are going to the conference. That that'll give you a pretty good indicator. There's a great cross section there of different types. Yeah, yeah. Amber said she's gonna come sing that song there. Yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> That's really great. I'm so happy for her because it's a, it's a great song and it, and it resonated so well with so many people. I, yeah. haven't, I haven't replicated it on mine yet. I may just grab Jaren's and put it on my channel, but it's awesome. It's a, it's a great mm -hmm. song and, and could be the anthem before it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Very well worth it. Yeah. Any, uh, any, <laughs> exactly. Any other, well, it'd be great for the main street. Well, whatever whatever media shows up will be fantastic. But if that if that yeah. song is is one of our high profile songs, that'd be awesome. Any anything else before I send you off? Um, God, I know there was something, but I oh yeah yeah yeah. No, I need some. Um, I wanted to ask you if I, I went and I tried to do my tag yesterday, my license plate. Yeah. And um, you can do eight in North Carolina and um, flat. Earth is taken. Somebody use F L A T E R T H. So I'm um, should I do F L T and then spell out the word Earth? You or can do if you have seven letters, no do do F do F L T E R T H. That's one of the variations. Do you have six or seven yeah, letters? Yeah, that's what I can do. Yeah, yeah. Then or do, I can do no with a space and then curve. I was trying to decide on which one I should do. You don't. You don't have to do uh, a space with curve. You could. You could spell it out. C u r v e. That's seven letters. Right. Right. And but I if you but if you do a space, space, they may only they may only let you do six, in which you'd have to do c r v e. Yeah. But either yeah, way, I think there's going to be the FLP. Right on. Yeah, go for it. And and again, send me the screenshot. If you're going to do it, take a screenshot of it before you actually get the plate. Okay. And I'll and I'll put it up there until you actually and then cuz that's what people have been doing. They've been sending me screenshots and then we get they get their plates, then they take a picture of it and then they send it to me. I just replace it. Cool. Somebody else already has that in North Carolina though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all right. Again, there's no there's no right answer for the plates. As long as I still think no curve and no globe and all those are great and somebody's it's still probably going to be a cool one out there that we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah. Wait, what was the one that you said? Oh, man. He came up with a good one yesterday, and I can't remember what it was. That's all right. Let me know. We have plenty of time. So not not right now. I mean, plenty of time down the road. No, no, no. <laughs> Just take your time. 
Who cares who's calling? <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, anything else before I, any shout outs before I send you off? Yeah. Well, the two I was talking about tonight, Brian and Lee. Brian's right. my boyfriend. Lee's my friend back home. Right on. Well, give them, give them time. They're, they're, they're along the trail. They're just chugging along. They may come around. <laughs> So. But Brian's going to come to the conference with me, so I think he'll learn a lot there. Right on. That's cool. All right. Well, hey, you have a good one, and uh, get some sleep, okay, because it's late. Yes, it is. Almost midnight. All right. <laughs> talk, talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. I know that 808 is dying to call. You've called like eight or nine times already. I have not been. All right. There you are. Here we go. All right, 808. Your time has come. Am I on? What? Yes, you're on. Am I on? Hey, yes, I you're on. Oh my god, I've never called in anything, and I've been trying to plan getting on your show, and I've just been listening live, and I heard you promise me that you were going to let me on, and so I, I, I'll take a deep breath. Everyone, everyone else. I mean, I saw your number. I was like, all right. Well, in fact, seven hundred four has been trying to. I'll have to get. I'll have to get him right after I'm done with you. So seven hundred four. I promise. Promise. I will not ignore you. I will get you before the evening's out. All right, where are you calling from? I'm calling from the south point of the Big Island of Hawaii. Wow! All right, so you so it's and, um, did the sun even go down there yet? Um, what time is it right now? It's six thirty-six. Um, I've been staring at the sun and moon, so I've, I'm super aware. But it's um, it's I think the sun just went down. Right. It's still um, twilight out. What's what's going on in in uh, the the relaxing, wonderful place of Hawaii? <laughs> It's doing pretty good. We actually have snow on Mauna Kea. Wow. Um, again, we've had it multiple times. We also got snow during, um, I think it was either July or June, which was super ironic. We had, we had snow in Hawaii weird. during the summer. That is really weird. So what, uh, what's, but, on, um, what's on your mind this evening? Um, I just wanted to call and give a shout out to um, Hawaii. And I haven't, I haven't heard any Hawaii people call in about Flat Earth. And um, I'm kind of, the only voice of butters. Well, no, I'll, tell, I'll, tell, and, um, I'll tell you what. Let's let's do this if you don't mind, because I'm trying to play match. You know, matchups. Do you, do you mind yeah. giving out your your email address? Yeah, I um <laughs> in November when I first heard your show, I set up um, flat Hawaii at gmail dot com. Oh wow, that's cool. And um, I was I was lucky to get it. I was stoked that no one had taken it. But um, flat Hawaii at gmail dot com. Well, yep. that's. And that's that's awesome. All right, flat Hawaii at gmail dot com. Cool. Yeah. Hopefully, but, um, there I are some people out there. You should, you should you should get the Hawaii license plate. I've been thinking about that. I'm um I've got so much on my plate. I'm um I wanted to give a shout out to my pregnant wife, Christine. <laughs> um, I love I love her more than flat Earth. I tell her that every day. That's a good idea. <laughs> and um, but uh, she's finally starting to starting to smile at me every time I bring up a news update or a current event. And, um, but yeah, the only curvature I can see is on her belly. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, yeah, with all the news that's been happening this last week, that's, uh, there's, there's a lot to cover out there. Well, it's been crazy. I feel like Kyrie Irving and I've been using a metaphor for sports. Sports is a war game. And Kyrie Irving is like one of the head generals of the sports teams. Oh yeah. And he, he's led a charge. And I've been I've been using the military definition of a charge, which is like to to go at your opponent with full force, um, with the most speed, yeah, to um to create an effective charge. And I, I feel like he he kind of led that charge for the mainstream because that's what I've been struggling with is just finding something mainstream that I can get like lay people. Oh yeah, yeah, like, it's looking at. Yeah, it was it was amazing. And don't don't sell his teammate Richard Jefferson short. He no 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 all of them and and uh, Draymond he was, and, mm-hmm. and of course LeBron it's amazing uh, what the what well LeBron guys... too because Kyrie Irving is one thing but then I'm like dude LeBron backed him up oh yeah so that that got a couple other people I am I'm actually been having some headway in getting people to look at flat Earth um, I've actually had some people personally message me saying like hey you're looking into this cool so have I and um. That's all happened this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a great week, and we're going to be milking this sucker for uh, for months to come. And so I'm I'm scouring yeah. the internet. Anytime anyone does an article on it, I'm I'm checking it out. Oh, I like, I want to put out um 
I live on South Point, and we have a, um, an active volcanic eruption. Yeah. And from from about 800 feet elevation, you can see the plume going into the ocean. Really? And I tried to do a Google Maps, and it's about 50 miles. I could be wrong. I'm totally willing to admit that. But I think it's about 50 miles as the crow flies. And that's a curvature test that I've been trying because it's going into the water. And so you can see, like where the plume goes into the water and you can see it from, from the South point because it goes up the, oh. the Southeastern edge. And, um, yep. Living on an Island down at South point, you've got more than 180 degrees of panoramic horizon. Right. And it's just, it's just ridiculous when people say, Oh, look out, look outside and you can see the curve. If you, if you do any long range video tests, let me know. Uh, and I will, I will use them on my channel. Be happy to, happy to put them up for you. I um is it okay if I promote my Instagram cuz I Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Um my Instagram is Kane's eye on the sky. And I just it's I'm like 15 posts in and I'm just trying to you know get people to look up and look at the sky. Right on. Good for you. Um that's awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, um, th- hey, thank yeah. you for for being diligent and for calling I think probably 10 times at least. And, oh, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, feel free, you know, again, we're going to try to do this every Tuesday, so feel free to call in again. Oh yeah. All right. I, um, I, I wake up with uh flatter for breakfast as well. Nice. Right on, man. All right. Hey, All right. you have a good one and uh, stay flat. Okay. All right. Aloha. All right. Aloha. See ya. All right. We're going to pick up seven, seven, five, cause they're not going away. Seven, seven, five. You still there? Uh, yeah. Where are you calling from? Uh, Nevada. Nevada. Right on. What uh, What's on your mind in Nevada? First, first time calling or have you called in before? Uh, no, first time calling. I just uh, uh, I just found your show last week, actually. Um, oh. I, I actually I just started finding out about Flat Earth last year. I thought it was a joke, to be honest with you. I was like, uh, I was on iFunny. And I found a bunch of stuff about flat earth and I started researching it. And then I just, after that, I was, I mean, I just couldn't get enough of it. You know? Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. And then, so I stumbled upon some good videos and uh, found this one by Mark Sargent. And I was like, I think it was called under the dome. And that <laughs> yep. one blew and me away. I yeah, mean, that, that, was, that was mine, but I did not make that video. That was a compilation video that, that a guy had put together. He took in all my clues and mashed them up together. And, called it under the dome full documentary and it's got two and a half million hits right now which is insane ah, it's amazing it's yeah. amazing i mean it, it, if, if you can watch that and still think that the earth is a globe i mean yeah. more power to you i can't do it right? <laughs> there's, well, there's no curvature you can't prove curvature and if you can't prove curvature then you're not on a globe i know <laughs> i know so, I, uh, I i was I try, trust me, man. I I tried and I tried and I tried, and I was really stubborn more than most. And then finally, I flipped, and now, like you, I, I couldn't get enough to where now, literally, I know, I, I know. <laughs> it was like uh, I think last month, my wife caught me watching uh, flat Earth videos, and she's like, "What are you doing?" And I told her, you know, I, I believe that the Earth is flat, you know, and. <laughs> So then she started getting into the videos with me, and so now I got her thinking it too. So it's, oh, well, uh, well, yeah, and once the once the Kyrie thing happened, my everything went into overdrive. I couldn't get to all the content that's. I'm still trying to. It's a there's a backlog of stuff I got to look through. Oh, it's it's yeah, that was amazing. I couldn't believe. I mean that 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 right there to get uh, to get the younger population. Oh yeah, um, thinking it and 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 seeing the lies of NASA. You know that's that's huge because you know if they can't if they can't convince the newer generations, oh yeah, you know eventually we're going to get people in Congress that are going to defund NASA because yeah. they're getting like twenty billion dollars a year. Oh yeah, to, with with no evidence. Right. They haven't even they haven't even tried to go to the moon for what forty years. <laughs> for oh yeah, but well almost fifty years since Apollo seventeen, and yet SpaceX yeah. says they're going there next year. And it's like, yeah, no, that's that's insane. And I, you know, I I have a theory about that. And maybe they're going to use their Project Blue Beam and not even actually use a rocket. Maybe you know, just make it look like. Can you pull? Yeah, make that'd it look be, like a rocket, and then just 
you've got external cameras. That would be a good test, wouldn't it? Can you simulate a rocket going around the moon? Can you pull that right. off to where anyone that's looking up in the sky with telescopes and observatories, can you can you pull it off? I don't know if they can, but man. You know, you got to wonder how, how far along they are with Project Bluebeam because – so a few years ago, that everyone was afraid that they were going to start making it look like the rapture was happening or whatever. Right. I don't know if you heard about that conspiracy. Oh, no, I knew about that one, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if they could do that, you know, can they make the rocket uh, take off and land right. with, with Project Bluebeam, you know? Right. Good one. Yeah, right. yeah we'll see. I, I can't wait. And plus, you know, the Google X challenge is still going on this year which is those five sp- different space companies all over the in different countries are supposed to send a probe to the moon that will beam back footage. So I, I, I didn't even know that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a 20 that. 20 million dollar first prize and there's two companies from America, one from Japan, one from Europe and one from India, I believe. And first one that gets there and beams back pictures gets 20 million bucks. And that's supposed wow. to happen, but the condition is it has to launch this year. And I was like, what? Seriously? <laughs> it's because, you know, you know how you're going to write that. It's five companies go up. Two, three of them don't even make it, you know, don't even get close. Two of them get land and only one of them be- beams back pictures and probably be the Americans. And well, right. I mean, it's, it's not easy to get a, to get a, a rocket to even take off. Oh, you know, I know. And, uh, how long? How long did, they, did it take them to do that? Look at look at uh, Korea, North Korea. They're trying to get a rocket to take off, and they're wondering how the heck we did it. Oh yeah. You know, they're probably trying to have a payload bigger than like two percent or whatever. Yeah. Trying to take off, but uh, it's not going to work. No, yeah, it's not. It's not. The, the anyway, payload problem is, is the biggest issue, but yeah. I appreciate any, uh, you taking any, my call, Mark. Oh no! Anything else? Any shout outs before I send you off? Because I'm going to try to squeeze in one more caller. Yeah, say hi to my wife, uh, fellow flat earther. <laughs> right on. So, right on. Uh, All right, man. Thanks, Mark. Uh, hey, maybe maybe talk work. to you next week? Yeah, maybe, man. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. All right, you too. Yeah, bye. bye. Okay, guys. I think I can take one more caller. One more caller for the night, and I think 704 was trying. So 704 calls in. I will see if I can take you because I know you've been trying for a while. Phone number is 720 720- Eight nine seven six one one one. That is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. And oh yes, by the way, it's late, but not too late. Earlier, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. And I'm a little surprised the Peanut Gallery did not actually ride me on that one. Didn't do it. Said sing it, but didn't say say it. Wonder if he knew. He had to say, oh, there's seven oh four. See if we can get him. All right, seven oh four. You're probably gonna be the last call of the night. Where are you calling from? Hey, Mark, this is Cliff from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, Cliff. What's going on? Oh, man, uh, you know, he was talking to Mark earlier, and he just made his uh, YouTube channel, uh, Zulu One. Yeah. And I think a lot of uh, people out here are starting to get that way. I know I just created a YouTube account, started subscribing to people. Um, but I'm also getting to the point where it's like, man, I'm, I'm ready to you know put some of my own stuff out there. Right on. And well, I think there's several people in the flat earth world that are, are getting to that point. I, I have no doubt. Again, I've seen so many people in the community creating YouTube channels for the first time ever. Heck, I was one of them. I had a YouTube channel, but I hadn't made a, a video in, wow, six years or more. And then finally decide, okay, I'm going to do this. So, yeah, it inspires. That is the one thing I can say about this 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 theory, which is so different from anything else, in that is it inspires people to put themselves out there. So, yeah, if anyone that wants to make a brand new channel and you want to advertise it on, you know, on, on this show, feel free. If you're coming out, it's like, yeah, I want to make a brand new channel and we're going to talk about this and that. Hey, more power to you. I will say rattle it off and let people uh, – let people go to it. Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to get some videos uploaded here soon. I've okay, done a couple of experiments myself and uh, working on a couple more, a um, little different angle than some of the others that we've seen already made. But uh, anyways, getting to that. But uh, earlier tonight, you were talking about the Coriolis effect. And I right. just wanted to mention a couple of thoughts on that. Yeah, is uh, one. 
one of the things when a long range shooter, you know, he's shooting at the target a mile and a half away, his bullet uh, is roughly in the air six, six and a half seconds before okay. it hits its target. Okay. So the biggest thing about it is it's in the, with the Coriolis effect is how long is it in the air? Right. Um, well, why don't we ever hear like a professional golfer saying, you know, uh, I was facing this uh, south bound hole here and I had to aim on the left side of the fairway to make up for the Coriolis effect. Right. Or a, or a professional football kicker, a uh, punter. You know, their hang time a lot of times five, six seconds. Oh, how can you- they say it? You did you miss the uh, when when Neil I, I will say his name in this case in case you don't know what the abbreviation is when Neil Tyson came out during uh, an overtime field goal where where the the team the, the 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 ball during the field goal hit one of the uprights and glanced off and he actually called into the NFL and said it happened because of the Coriolis effect and they actually talked about it on Fox Sports it was unbelievable I was going really you, that's that's the level of desperation. But you're absolutely right. And I'd never, ever heard that before. And I watched a lot of different sports over the years. And that actually came up. But a golfer is a bit, way better example, great example on your part, which is a golfer, you know, you're making big drives. Depending on where you're pointing, you should have to take that into account, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you have to do that? Oh, yeah. I would think you, so. you would think so. And then also, I mean, what, what's the other things that snipers say they take into account? They take in wind, humidity. They take in the, the uh, atmospheric conditions. Yeah. Well, a golfer does do that. Um, yeah. These professional guys, they'll talk about it on TV. Well, hey, we, we're playing to the mountains. The air is drier. We can hit the ball further. I had to take two less clubs today on every shot. You know, they, yeah. they factor all that in. Right. You, you never hear them say, well, well this, is, this hole is facing east, so I'm going to get at least 20 more yards because of the Coriolis effect. I mean, it's just uh, it's, the biggest, it's one of the biggest stinking jokes out there. Yeah, it's the biggest trick ever pulled, and and it was done pretty pretty well. It's been hidden really well over the last sixty years, but not anymore. So, any uh, any shout outs before I send you off? No, just a mark in New York. Uh, I'm glad he created a YouTube account. I already uh, subscribed to him, and I uh, look forward to watching his videos in a little bit. Cool. All right, man. Well, you, hey, you have a good rest of your evening. Okay. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Okay. And for the peanut gallery, because he asked the Mark from New York, his YouTube channel is called Zulu One, and that's Z U L U O N E. So it's spelled out. It's not Z One or any sort of military. I know you'd ask that, but it's no Z U L U O N E. Uh, if anyone calls and they want to talk really briefly, I might be able to squeeze you in. Otherwise, let's read this email from Croatia. Of all the Flyers channels, yours seems to be the best. Aw. I like your voice and how you interview other people and casually speak over topics. Now, I have a question regarding your last video when they made fun of Kyrie. Why are people so dumb to jump on conclusions that Earth is a sphere and there is no way there is a little percentage that maybe it's just not as they say? And on top of that, all they never actually Googled or read anything about the flat Earth and see our perspective. All they do is just laugh thinking, well, he must be trolling. When you say the Earth is not round, you are excluded from talking with grown-ups. Why is this? Also, I'm Croatian, so sorry for the lack of grammar. Keep up the good work. Matija Sintocinik, S-E-N-T-O-C-N-I-K. And you are absolutely right. The only way that a person can stay out of flat earth is to not look at it, meaning you're, you're going to look at it, but only from a standpoint that you're, uh, uh, you're going to troll it. Uh, you, you can't look inside the box. You can't look inside Pandora's box. Okay, three minutes. I'm going to do this, okay? We're going to do 306 area code. All right, 306, you got two minutes. Then I got to wrap up the show. So where are you calling from? This is Alan from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Hey, man, what's going on? I, I've called you before, but I just wanted to quickly say one thing. Yeah. Um, so my full name is Alan Holman, and uh, in 2007... I acted as one of the main characters in a film that was at a few at a few film festivals throughout the world, uh-huh. and so I have an IMDb page, and so I'm officially saying that me, an actor with an IMDb page, is a flat earther. Nice. That's yeah. great, man. That's that's super super. Just wanted to say that. Well, thank you. Any uh, any shout outs before I wrap up the show? My friend Mitch, he listens to your show. Is he listening? 
I have no idea if he's listening, but he listens to it on YouTube. So oh, okay. a shout out to my friend Mitch. Mitch, you should be listening to this live, but that's okay. We'll forgive you. <laughs> See you later. All right, man. Have a good night. You too. Okay, no more calls tonight. Thank you for everybody that called in on the show, and we'll try to do that next week. Tomorrow, of course, I'm doing Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes with Patricia Steer. That's going to be at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Emailing me, because I, I get so many emails, I will try to do an email show either tomorrow or Thursday. You can email me at m s a r g e n t 23 at comcast.net. And if it's not too long and scientific, I will try to read it. If it has a whole bunch of equations in it, I probably won't because that doesn't translate well on radio. Thank you to the peanut gallery for doing all that he does, which is great. It's just, it's just a guy, by the way. It's not a, like an actual peanut gallery. And what else? Thank you. to A personal thank you to Kyrie. Maybe I'll do a video for Kyrie. Personal thank you to Kyrie Irving for just – putting himself out there NBA one of the best point guards in the National Basketball Association he puts himself out there and says that he's into flat earth and for every one of him you know he's about as high profile as it gets in athletics for every Kyrie how many people are there in the celebrity world that know but they're afraid to say something because their agent won't let them and how many people uh, are, are still in the closet about flat earth well you again as more more individuals come out. You won't have to feel the fear as much. Remember, there's a conference coming up in the fall in, in North Carolina. I encourage everybody. We got tons of time before then, but I will be pumping this sucker up every week. So what else? Treat others better than you treat yourself. If everyone pays it forward, the world will be a better place. And with that, how many seconds do we got left before I say There it is. See you next time, guys. Same flat time. Same flat channel. Check out enclosedworld.com, by the way. What is this? Is that a model of the flat geocentric earth? (laughs) I had to make a new one. What are you doing?